The last couple of years should have been bad for gold from an investment perspective due to rising interest rates. Gold is like a, a bond without a coupon, a non-interest bearing asset. So yields and higher interest rates in general, they are an opportunity cost of holding gold. And when they go up, gold prices should go down. Now, this chart shows that there was a reasonably close relationship. It's not perfect, but reasonably close between gold prices and interest rates. But that broke down when Russia invaded Ukraine. Now, I'm plotting the yield on US tips here. That's Treasury Inflation Protected Securities upside down. So a lower number is higher yields. They're the equivalent of our index link gilts here in the UK. So they are a genuine real yield. And even as those real yields soared, the gold price actually firmed. Now, I trace this to the fact that the US and the European Union have frozen some $350 billion of Russian central bank reserves. And the surprising strength of gold probably reflects capital flight into gold by central banks and wealthy, politically exposed individuals who fear that they might suffer a similar fate at some point in the future. Sanctions on Russia are unprecedented in terms of their breadth and depth. In addition to the central bank, close to 2,000 individuals and entities have had their assets frozen. Now, these central bank, these financial sanctions, they're imposed via central banks in the West together with the payment and clearing systems. Euroclear is playing a big, albeit reluctant, role here including getting interest on billions of dollars of various currencies from Russian assets that have matured and they're earning interest on deposit. Now, of course, gold is no one's liability. And though confiscation is still a risk, as a physical asset, it's possible to place it beyond the reach of these sanctions. And central banks have been buying gold in record amounts since the Russian invasions, over 1,000 tonnes in 2022. And according to the data we have for the first nine months of last year, they kept up the pace even stronger. Turkey has been the biggest buyer, with China, India, Singapore, Egypt and the Gulf states all notable buyers. Of course, these central banks individually may have other motives for buying more gold. But safety first considerations must have been a theme for many. And of course, these figures don't include buying by non-central banks. But where do we go from here? Interest rates are headed lower, so that would surprise support for the gold price and the capital flight safety first motive. That could well remain strong. The sanctioned assets have not actually been confiscated. Rather, the Western governments, they want to use them to rebuild Ukraine after the war is over. And once negotiations on a peace deal begin, how this occurs and who controls the spending is going to be a big component of any deal. And as these discussions take place, the vulnerability of conventional financial assets will be highlighted in this context. Now, there are other ways, of course, to protect assets from being frozen. And I'm sure many of you have been thinking about Bitcoin. Well, perhaps. But gold has demonstrated its safety, security and value well, for over a thousand years or more, Bitcoin has a long way to go to match that. Finally, let me emphasize, none of this is investment advice for you. No, I'm merely discussing the macro background. So until next week, goodbye.